Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Campolo, and I am live. Welcome to the first solo stream of AJC and the Web Devs. This will be a fun one. We're going to be looking at Bun, and Bun is this new, uh, not very well-trodden path of a tool <laughs> that we're going to be doing some very experimental stuff with. It's funny, the last, like, two hours i've been just like kind of scrambling around my whole network to be like hey has anyone done anything with bun do you have any idea how bun works and thankfully a couple of people did so uh let's show some messages here we got nikki t nikki t from jersey canada here with us good to be here we got nikki another nikki here nikki muleman and then we got ben myers all right what's up everybody thanks so much for being here uh yeah so um, yeah, that's what I was saying. I was kind of trying out Bun right before this and seeing what it can do and how to use it. And for me, when I approach new tools, like, and, and I think this is made, made my Redwood bias coming through the whole universal deployment machine. The first question I ask with any tool is like, how do I deploy this thing? Like, it's just kind of where my mind goes. And it was not a particularly <laughs> thought out thing, I think, for Bun as Bun was being created. It was more so as like, a development tool and now that it is like being kind of put forward as this replacement to node and dino people are like okay well if it's node or dino then i need to like put it on a server and run it because that's what those things do so <laughs> i kind of was asking around and um austin crim saved my bacon he already had a whole repo that worked and was just like run this thing on railway and it's just gonna go and like bam and that's exactly what happened so i'm gonna be showing today how to do this with railway um, partly just because Austin kind of already figured that out and gave me a repo to do it. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean it's the easiest way to do it. It's just like the first one that I think people figured out. And then there's another one called um, North. Let's see. Is it North Flake or North Flank? It is North Flanks. There's this tool called North Flank that I had never even heard of. They wrote the first blog post kind of explaining how to do this. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. And I was not quite able to get it going, partly because um, I never used the service before. And I also think they had um, a couple kind of like implied steps in the tutorial, which were like things I skipped over and were like, yep, in, in retrospect, very obvious. So um, yeah, it's, I think I might figure that one out and do it on another stream along with things like fly. But today we're just going to look at railway. So um, let me get, we got Luke here with us as well. Hello, hello. Let me get my thing all set up so I can start screen sharing and showing stuff. This is one I was kind of throwing together at the last minute. So I have a lot of things I need to get going on my screen right now. All right, that's all good. That's all good. How's everyone doing out there in chat world? Boom, 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 boom. boom. And then, ooh, one thing I still need to do, get the Twitch chat up. Great, great, great. Sorry, tweet thought it was a good way to spend the afternoon. <laughs> Happy to hear that. That's, um, that's the plan. Let's set some uh, foundation here for people who have never even heard of Bun. Because when it comes to cool new dev tools, you never know. So this was created by Jared Sumner. He is a nerd of the highest nerd caliber. He basically said, I want to just build this thing. And it's um, an incredibly large, complex project that he has kind of gone at it like totally solo. And is now building a company around, as you can see, here introducing bun so this is bun and then there's also oven and this happened within the last couple of weeks there's a company being built around bun itself there's kind of a <laughs> tweet that went out about the uh commitment and time that would be involved in working for this company that led to a lot of debate on twitter I'm not really going to talk about that because it's kind of outside the scope of this but Oven itself is going to be a company around the tool Bun. So Bun, as you can see here, 
is a fast all-in-one JavaScript runtime. And this kind of will lead you to ask naturally, what is a JavaScript runtime? A JavaScript runtime is a thing that runs JavaScript code. And in this case, you know, TypeScript code, because that's kind of seen as table stakes with any of these things these days. Node is known as one of the more well-known JavaScript runtimes, along with Dino now, which was put forward as a replacement to Node. And it's all about, oh my god, Claire is here. Hello, Claire. That's awesome, Claire, a Redwood team member. And yeah, so like for me, this is something that I was talking about when the, so someone who hangs out in the lunch dev server had um, put forward this kind of topic and said, hey, you should you should do a bun episode. So I was asking him what he wanted to see. And I think it's an interesting thing for the back end JavaScript. Because when we look at the front end of JavaScript, we have React, we have Vue, we have Svelte. Not only that, now we have Solid and Quick and Marco. And it's just this huge explosion of tools and even though React is the clear front runner, you have, that's the one right there, discord.gg forward slash lunch dev. And when you have the front end and all these different tools, even though React is the clear front runner, you have a situation where there's good alternatives for different use cases and for different preferences and for just different DX even. And I think that's good. I think competition is healthy. I think especially in the open source world, the ability to just take influence from other projects, even straight up copy other projects and build something slightly different and slightly better. And that's a good thing. I think it, you know, keeps people from just, you know, building a thing. And then like, imagine if, you know, we were just all still using jQuery today. Like not that jQuery was bad at the time, but there we've been able to kind of go beyond it. And that's a good thing. That's healthy for the web. So I think we're in a situation now where the back end is starting to see some of the same competition to where Node has been the thing to use in the back end forever. And the, the first kind of chink in this armor, I think, was not Bun or Dino. Actually, it was Cloudflare Workers, because Cloudflare Workers was able to present an alternative. <laughs> How quickly can Bun accidentally remove all your files at root? That's a good question. I would imagine extremely quickly. But I don't know if that is a pro or a con. <laughs> the, so Cloudflare Workers was a alternative to Node, actually, because Cloudflare Workers uses V8, much like Node does, but it does not just run Node. It's a completely separate runtime that was proprietary to Cloudflare Workers. And this is something that actually came up on... Um, I'm not going to be able to pull up the URL for this, but there's a new episode of FS Jam that we just put out with um, Matt Billman. He was talking about why they chose Dino instead of Cloudflare Workers for Netlify's edge functions is because Cloudflare Workers do not have an open source runtime. It's actually proprietary, although this is changing in the future. They're actually working on open sourcing it. Hello to Nexel in the chat. Nexel is the creator of Create T3 app, which is the coolest new full stack app anyone has built since Redwood. Thank you for being here. Okay. Uh, I was talking about Cloudflare Workers. So Cloudflare Workers was kind of an alternative runtime to Node. Then you also had Dino, which is an alternative runtime to Node. Now you have Bun. So Bun is a way to run JavaScript code. So that's a very long, rambly way of <laughs> explaining Bun that hopefully makes sense to people. Yeah, I'd be curious for people who are hanging out in the chat, you know, like, what do you know about Bun? What is your take on Bun right now? What are you hoping to see from Bun? Anything like that? I'd be curious to hear. It seems like people in the chat actually know what Bun is to a certain extent. So, you know, throw out some thoughts, throw out some opinions. And then I'm going to start getting our project going here very soon. But first, I want to check out um, some tweets. So I haven't touched it yet. Been a fly on the wall for the last several months. Yeah. And I think that's probably going to be the case for a lot of people when it comes to these new tools. It's easy to become aware of it <laughs> and to know it exists, but to actually sit down and try and use it a whole separate process and this is something that i've kind of like staked out as a thing i like to do specifically there i have this whole you know blog series a first look at blank 
maybe it'll get, you know, as I was just saying, create T3 app. That was the last one I did. It has a pretty good response, as you can see. But if you look at a first look at blank, I've got 18 of these blog posts. First, first look at hard hat ethers, Astro, Oak, Nux, Pulumi, GraphQL Helix, Fargate, Serverless Cloud, Keystone, Slinkity, Fly, GitHub Actions, PostgreSQL, on, on, on. on. And once you actually get into the habit of kind of trying these things out, you can get a better sense of actually what they do and kind of cut through the hype and the buzzwords and all that. Yeah, and I've been, I've been blogging for a while. Blogging is kind of like my thing. Um, from what I've seen briefly, it's faster dev experience, but I haven't looked at the speed gains for actual apps yet. This is Nikki. I'm trying to remember why he went with JavaScript core instead of V8. Is JavaScript core faster under the hood than V8? I have to imagine that's the case. You know, they're the this is one of those things where sometimes you just introduce a new tool where the speed is like an order of magnitude faster. This is why ES builds blew everyone's minds and V took over Webpack so fast is because it was a whole different language. It was written in Go. So once you write something in a different language, you have completely different speed characteristics. So even though people talk about Node being a JavaScript runtime, Node is actually written in C++ <laughs> and Dino is written in Rust. So these things are not written in JavaScript. There are different programming languages that are running JavaScript code. So this is actually important to mention then. I'm not realizing. Bun is built on Zig. Zig is a programming language that is meant to be a alternative to things like C++ and Rust. So I think the speed gains, if I was to guess, probably have a lot to do with Zig more than anything else. Um, let's go back to the chat here. So um, is there anything different syntax-wise from Node? As far as I can tell, it should not be a different syntax. It's going to have a different project setup. It has differences in terms of what your package.json is doing and what other stuff like that is doing. That's the biggest difference I've noticed so far, but it seemed like it was meant to just run JavaScript the way JavaScript works while also being kind of... Yeah, so I guess the, the question I would be curious then is the compatibility of things like NPM versus non-NPM. So that's the big question Dino is trying to deal with. Heavy Node.js compat, although Dino is doing this now too. Yeah, exactly. Like with Dino, they were trying not to be compatible with npm i think on purpose because they want a, a clean slate but at a certain point people are like i'm not going to use this thing until you let me use my 10,000 node modules and so they kind of it, they forced their hand and now dino is working on working with all your node modules that you love so very very much um i love to hear about how you refined your technical writing um i did it a lot over and over again like with the first look series um i would just pick a tool and I try and create an end-to-end -end tutorial experience that I felt like was better than whatever they were offering in their own doc. So I'd look at their get starting guide. I would go through it. I would find all the missing steps that I felt like were implied knowledge that weren't necessarily explicitly stated. I would then write my own blog post that was like twice as long. And I would also make it, as I was saying, deploy the actual things. A lot of blog posts or a lot of uh, getting started tutorials will be like, Here's how you get the same computer. Here's how you run out of your computer. But to me, like, that's, <laughs> is like, okay, what do I do with that? You know, I, if I don't have it on the internet, I don't have a thing. So I would create an end-to-end -end tutorial that would both start from blank, either generating a project or just creating a blank directory and creating files, and then walking that process through to actually deploying the thing with the goal being that even someone who may not even know how to code, could follow along and be like, okay, I'm going to run these commands. I'm going to put this code in these files. And then at the end, I'm going to have a thing, like almost to make it like <laughs> you can't mess it up. <laughs> that's, that's really my goal with these tutorials. So I did that with like 30 projects. And then that's kind of like how I refined my, my technical writing. Uh, Nexel is saying, I think Bun is quite fast in some places, but Dino is still better in a lot of stuff. I think it's unfair to Bun to compare it right now with Dino because it doesn't even have 1.0. Yeah, and this is the thing. When Bun came out, people immediately start comparing it to Node and Dino. But Dino, I mean, Node's been around for 10 years. Node was invented in 2009. Dino has been around now for four years. 
And Bun is just one guy who's been working on it in his like garage, <laughs> you know, like not literally, but it's like, you know, Tony Stark built this in a cave, I like, <laughs> kind of thing. And so he's just, it's just this guy who's been working on this thing for like a year and good for him, but you, you just can't come, it's completely different scales of things. So I, I think it's kind of unfair to compare to put Bun up against Node and Dino at this stage because it's not there yet. And it's like, you know, the docs aren't there yet, that's for sure. <laughs> and this is something that I was going to get into with the, the Twitter stuff. Um, if folks want to know more about Dino, I chat with one of the core teams. Thank you for this. This is I am developer.com. Great, great content from Nikki T. Uh, we got Saban over here, Saban the World. And then I'm curious about Zig, still learning Rust for Zig. I heard it's like C without the bad parts. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I've heard as well. You want a, a systems programming language that can get deep into the guts of stuff without having to deal with all the pointers and, and things like that. I don't know anything about Zig, so... There may be pointers. I have no idea. This is um, beyond my pay grade. So um, cool. Let's start looking at just kind of what I was doing to get this running originally. Um, this is the one. Um, Zig lacks ecosystem packages. It's, and that's the, there's a cold start problem with every single programming language, every single framework, every single runtime, all of them you are going to have this problem of once you build a thing, you need then a hundred, a thousand, 10,000 more people to build more things because that's what you're competing with. They believe in making everything from scratch. Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what Go did though. And, and Go got to having an ecosystem because they built everything from scratch and people liked the way they built it from scratch. So it ended up working out. So it's not impossible. You just need a company with maybe $500 billion to back you. <laughs> I'll get into this is programming. Rust is the best language to do it right now. Yeah, I, that's probably what I would guess too. Okay, so I was tweeting out at everyone I know who runs deployment platforms to see who knew how to do this. So I tweeted Kurt from Fly.io, uh, just Jake and Anurag from Render. None of them responded, but <laughs> we got a couple good answers anyway. Uh, Austin Krim, good friend from Prisma, Already had a repo here showing how to do it on Railway. And then hello from Trost in the chat. Let me put this here and then this here. And then another cool, so this is Austin Krim's repo. We look at this today. And then this is my running application that I was able to get going. And Peter Cooper, um, I don't know if many people here know Peter Cooper. He runs the Cooper Press newsletters. Very, very cool dude. He got it running on fly and went through this um, North Flank tutorial, which I was checking out. Um, oh, they do have a Git repo. Oh, this is what I missed. This is what I needed. Okay, sweet. All right. Next time, this is what I'll be doing. Primer CSS color rancher. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Do not come to the stream to learn about CSS. <laughs> there are better people to teach you CSS out there for sure. And then this is uh, the actual running fly application Peter Cooper got going. But let's kick it back now. And no pale gold rock, you love in the yellow. The blue. I have no idea what you're talking about right now, Nikki. <laughs> Okay, so I had created just a blank repo here. Um, all my project stories, AJC Web Dev dash the name of the thing, AJC Web Dev Bun. And then I've got a readme here where I kind of spelled out some steps for people. And there's a couple blog posts already about Bun. I already mentioned the Norflank one. And then there's a log rocket one. Oops. And then there's this one from Dev Genius. What is this one? Yeah, this one I have not even read yet. But with each of these, you're going to get at least some sort of step by step. Yeah, this is, this one's not 
that particularly useful, but it's better than nothing. So <laughs> if you go to the fun GitHub, and I kind of gave Jared a little bit of guff about this on, on Twitter, the readme is extremely long. It's, it's not a short readme. That is not the problem. <laughs> the problem is that this is a huge reference guide. This is not docs. So like having actual docs requires step-by-step -step and like it requires a getting started step with step-by-step -step instructions saying here's how you get a project going here's how you do something with it this is basically explaining all of bun from beginning to end in whatever order he felt fit to explain it which is nice that it's all here but i would have to read through this entire thing and then reverse engineer a tutorial from it which is partly what i'm doing here so this is not great. This is not a great way to get into someone's tool. I highly encourage whoever Jared hires first to write better docs. These docs are not great. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So this will be the first way you would install Bunny uh, curl command. You hit the install script and then you install it. Then you do this and then you do that. So now once you've done that and you can find those on the, the Bun website if you're trying to follow along at home <laughs> open the readme and like go file and sort it out <laughs> right so if you run the help command you're gonna see all this i'm zooming out so you can kind of see the whole the whole thing and then if we zoom in now it looks like these things on the bottom are most important um yeah so so next l so what i'm gonna start by doing is i'm gonna create just in uh, a plain index.js file that's going to be like a bun server and we're going to run that with a docker container on railway and once we do that then i'm going to show how you would actually generate like a react app or a, a next app with bun so this is all of the bun commands we got things like dev init create i didn't try out the init command i should try that next time so there's a lot of good stuff here. Like this tool is very built out. It's just, like I said, there's not really like a good entry point. Like how do you start with this thing? Because the docs is just this like huge brain dump of stuff. But what I was able to do, there's a bum package for making servers. Hmm, interesting. If you have a link for that, please drop it. Got trash dev in the house. Yay, yay. There's a bun global, like the Dino global. Um, Yeah, that sounds about right the let me pull up austin's repo again because this is what i was kind of following along with so if we check this out we're gonna have a server.ts file so so this is our whole server right here it's just gonna run bun.serve and then it's gonna do a fetch request and then it's gonna give a response that has a little bit of html here that's the header with a content type so that's all pretty cool that's pretty comprehensible and then if we look at his docker file here all it's doing is copying this uh, docker image whatever this is copying over all of the files and then just running bun server.ts so the first thing I'm going to do, and actually I was going to make this the most simple, I think, is I'm just going to clone this repo down. Um, I think I might already have it there. Let me do this. Okay. That's good. That's good. And, okay. Um, let's do that. Uh, okay, so we're going to clone this repo. And then it up and then i th think let's see if we can just run on server.ts see what happens so this will open it up now on localhost 3000 and there we go so there's our hello bun let's do this and that and let's try changing this And it looks like we're going to restart the server to see the change. Oh, what's this one here? This is a fast minimalist framework for the button. <laughs> Good. 
reference. Wow. Okay. So there's already frameworks being built around bun. I did not see that coming. Let me see. When was this created? So this was created July 9th. I always like going to the very first commit on things. <laughs> How many dumpling references? Does anyone here watch Bo Burnham? And whenever I hear dumplings now, I just think of there's this song in the the Bo Burnham alternative takes for Inside, where he has this argument with like his girlfriend about dumplings and how she takes one of his dumplings. They order dumplings, and he's like, "You owe me a dumpling or a dumpling equivalent." <laughs> okay, so this is oh okay, it's Koa with bun. Get it? Because it's boa. <laughs> so it's a, if anyone knows of oak, oak is a play on koa and then node or dino is a play on node. So this is a, an HTTP server middleware framework for bun that is inspired by koa. That makes a lot of sense. If anyone here wants to check out semantics, um, building an API with dino and oak, this block of code right here is almost line for line what we built on that stream. <laughs> Thank you for that link, Nexel. This is really, really interesting. I had no idea about this. Okay, great. So now that we got <clears throat> this thing, we've got a Docker file. We've got a server.ts. And then we've got this bun.lockb. I've no idea what this is. <laughs> I don't have the slightest clue. I should look at the bun docs right now to figure out what this actually is. Um, bun.lock b print a yarn v1 lock file. It does not load, it just converts. Okay, so this is bun's version of a lock file. Hello to Dev in the chat. Dev is the meme lord extraordinaire over in Theo server. He once created a meme. It was a Will Smith slapping Chris Rock meme with a remix slapping solid. If you know the context, you know the context. It was three times more impressions than the most impressions I've ever gotten on a tweet. I almost felt bad tweeting it out because he, he deserves all of that good tweet love. Okay, so this is now basically ready to go on to railway so for <laughs> that's what i'm gonna remember you for you'll be remembered for far better one day i'm sure the bedrock one was yeah and so he also had one where it's comparing bedrock to redwood that's a, a bit of a diversion let's um let's look at railway right now i know some people in the chat here probably already know railway but it is a way to run servers and databases and a way to do that in a very, very easy way. And it has the ability to basically take a Docker file and a project with a Docker file and just like figure it out. So I had some instructions in my last readme. Let me pull that back up again. So I had, um, here we go. So you start with, Railway and knit. And then that's going to initialize a project for you. So we're going to select. Want to try something new instead of railway? Hit me with any suggestions. This is only going to take like 30 seconds to get going. So after this, we can do anything. I'm going to give it the name AJC Web Dev Bun. And after that, it's already got that going. All right, put a pin on that hop.io. Yeah, then run railway link and select. You see here we got my T3 one running as well. And then we're going to do railway up. And this will actually put it up onto the clouds. And then railway open to go to it. It will then detect that you have a web server All right, this is meant to say cool, not the word the mod thinks it is. You were fine. 
And then we're gonna say generate a domain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is a good good call on the bot. This is a correct. <laughs> and then now we actually have this thing running here. It will take a second to actually get running. It's um gonna have to actually spin out the Docker container. It should pretty much work. So there it is. That's all we had to do. We had to run railway init, railway link, and then railway up. And then your entire project with the Docker file is now running on this URL. That's pretty great. All right, now we got Hop. Hop is the cloud platform for real time. So Nexel, how much is this company paying you to advertise for them? No, I'm just kidding. They should be paying you though, because I have not heard of this. And there's so many deployment platforms in the world. I know of probably eight or nine. You got fly.io, you got render. Um, I have a furl link. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so let's try this out. I don't know, let's let's see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect. Um, oh no, can't do that. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna try and set this up with my email. So I'm gonna hop off for just a second. Don't wanna do anything dumb there. Also, thank you so much for everyone hanging out in the chat right now. This is super fun. Um, so let me put in my email here. Gmail.com. And then that will give me an invite code. Check my invite code over here. Okay. Hmm. Nothing yet. It's in private beta. Okay. So that means I can't use it? <laughs> oh, wait. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> that link goes to a Rickroll, Nexel. I can't tell if you're messing with me right now or not. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Your link goes quick. <laughs> okay. So is this like a, a meme deployment platform or is this actually a real thing, Nexel? <laughs> Let me go back to share my screen. Okay, so... This is a Rickroll. <laughs> they recently had a hackathon. Okay, it is real. It's a real thing. But can I use it? <laughs> let's uh let's kick it back here a few steps. Okay, so we got it running on a railway. That is pretty cool. Oh, you're using the the hop app as a redirect to a Rickroll as a way to demonstrate the tool. I understand. Okay, I understand now. Clever, very clever. <laughs> All right, let's see how to generate a next app with this thing now. Because, you know, it's great to have a running node server, but I think most of us these days are probably just spinning up things like React and Next and all that. So let's get this going again. Fresh project. All right, so we're doing bun create next. Then we're going to create a project called AJC web dev dash bun dot next. Let's now take a look at it over here. And here now, if you've ever seen a next app before, you will see some familiar things like pages underscore app.tsx and index.tsx to then run it, you do run dev, run up local host 3000, and then there's your next app. So that is a very nice onboarding experience. It's a very good way to get set up. I think that if they can add those couple extra steps of actually putting this next app onto something like Vercel, 
we have a really cool workflow here. But as far as I can tell, I have no idea how I would run this thing on first cell unless I was just like somehow to run the actual thing with their yeah see i don't even know like <laughs> i can imagine running this on anything that runs a docker file but i would have no idea how to get this to work with first cell so that would be kind of the next question in my mind is how do you run next.js with bun on first cell i'm sure the first cell people are working on it but at this point i would not know how to do that so let's try editing some of this and see what happens so let's go here let's just delete that and change this to hello from ajc and web devs all right cool so let's go ahead but i was also working on deployment platform right are they i'm curious about that um let me see if that was mentioned in the original post about it. Because as far as I know, yeah, the word deployment is nowhere in this. So as far as I know, they created a company with no stated plan of monetization. Now, that does not mean that they do not have plans for monetization. I think that they're probably leaving it vague right now because they have a couple different things they're going to try and they're going to see what's going to succeed. And I think that's smart because you can never know ahead of time or something like this. When you build a company around an open source tool, there's ways to monetize it. There's a couple different models we've seen over the last two decades in terms of building a deployment platform, offering services that extend it. Um, Look at please meet up in point. It's written hosting. Oh, hosting. Okay. That's why. Offer hosting. Okay. So there you go. So they're going to do. Wait, that will leave buns. Offer hosting and grow bun into it. Okay. So they are doing a hosting platform, it sounds like. Okay. Good for them. Um, we'll see how that pans out. It's a bold move, Cotton. We'll see how it, see how it goes. Um, yeah. I mean, I think if they can offer a nice DX, you know, like, why not? There's There's plenty of good solutions for hosting the front end there's plenty of good solutions for hosting static websites there's not as many good solutions for just hosting node apps unless you're running them in a docker file as we've shown with things like railway and render yeah, exactly yeah they'll make their own dino deploy is kind of the idea so if you know dino deploy Dino Deploy is a deployment platform based around Dino itself. And actually, I really like Dino Deploy. I think Dino Deploy is, is pretty sweet. So if Oven can offer something similar for Bun and they just make it work, and this is maybe this is why there's not good tutorials for deploying it in other places because they don't want people to deploy it in other places. They want people to deploy it on Oven in you know X amount of months. So we'll see what happens with that. There's a lot of interesting things going on here. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on with Bun. Um, this is about all of the things I want to actually show in terms of like tutorials and whatnot. Um, let me get this thing on a Git repo so people can see it because we already shared um, Austin Crims a while ago. So if you want to get this thing onto... Um, Railway or something like that. This will be the way to do it if you want to get a Next.js project going. I'm going to get mine up onto a Git repo real quick. Uh, let's see. Where's my readme at? Yeah, there we go. Any other questions about Bun um, before I start closing it out here? Yes. And then here's this frame. Who wants to check this out and play around with this? And then there was a Norflake one. It's the other one. So these three repos are probably three of the best places to get started right now with Bun. And there's not a ton of written material for walking through things. But um, hopefully this stream gave some idea of what you can do with Bun and how to use it. Uh, as always, my name is 
Anthony, and I, I am found at AJC WebDev on the Twitters. I actually have a recent Twitter refresh for people who haven't seen it yet with this cool little hero patterns background that Ben Myers got me set up with. Yes, next all, you should absolutely write a bun, a bun blog post. I will likely have one maybe in a week or two. I think that with any of this stuff, you know, I was only able to find maybe like three or four blog posts that have been written about it. And there, there really <laughs> needs to be more. Ideally, there should be multiple blog posts for different projects and different use cases and different deployment platforms. And, you know, there's just there's always going to be a need for more docs and especially up to date docs. And so if you want to write something about Bun, I think that would get a lot of traction right now. And thank you to Nikki T. He'll be on the stream on October 24th. We got actually a already very full schedule of guests coming up. We're going to have Travis Swaithmayer talking about Bedrock Layout. We're going to have um, Sabin talking about end-to-end -end type safety. We're going to have Brandon Roberts talking about analog. We're going to have Noah Hine talking about something <laughs> Web3 related. And yeah, so um, thank you everyone who came to hang out. I think I'm going to cut it a little short today because I think I showed all the stuff that I wanted to show. Yeah, so uh, Bedrock Layout, Nexel. This is a layout CSS library. We did a, a podcast not too long ago about it, but if you want to just check out the actual website itself, it's for like repeatable layout patterns. So things like columns and grids and... Um, the stack is actually the one he, he always references as a kind of good, good hello world example. Let's take a look at this. Um, so you have like, just how do you like stack things on top of each other? So things like that. Oh, thank God. It's not the templates, it's not the templates. CSS framework plus component library that implements said CSS framework. Yeah, exactly. So it's a way to just take kind of like repeatable common layout patterns and make those easy to use in things like a you know React application or even a solid application. I know he has gone heavy into solid recently, but Travis will be on to talk more about this in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye on my Twitter to learn more about that. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for coming out and for hanging out. This was a lot of fun. And this will be pretty much every, um, yep, yeah, there you go. Yep, yeah, this will be pretty much every week, Monday at this time. Um, it's 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time or 10 a.m., I think, Pacific time. So yeah, and uh, this will close out for us today. And um, hope to see you next time.